Alright boys, we are back and it's time to continue with our Quebec City Ace Nordiques. And I'll let you know I'm pretty hungover right now. Me, the fans, and the Quebec City Ace Nordiques were out partying in the streets of Quebec last night. Going wild, right? Enjoying the fact that we won our first career Stanley Cup of the franchise. So it was a great night, but I will let you know that no property damages, nothing happened. Everyone got to work on time today. The streets were clean. Just some good old-fashioned drunken fun last night, alright? But... All good things must come to an end, all right? The season is over, now it's time to focus on the off season. But what a year it was. I mean, looking back, what a year it was. Year four will always be remembered by Quebec City. I mean, a President's Trophy and a dominating run to the, to the finals and to the cup. I mean, round one against the Sabres, five games. Round two against Detroit, five games. Round three against Washington, the team that kicked us out in the first round in uh, year two, five games. And then we got to the Stanley Cup Finals, going, against, going up against a team that was on 11 game winning streak or uh, something like that they won the first game against us all right so then we won the next two or sorry the next three we thought we might win it in five again but they answered back all right proving that they were a better team than the first three teams that we beat but we still managed to get it done in six games not once ever having ourselves with our backs up against the wall never having to deal with an elimination game once in these playoffs so what a year it was okay but I want to start a dynasty now now, before we get going, before we get... You know what? I can start the simulation here. Hang on. But I want to clear something up because there's a lot of controversy down there in the comments. So I just want to clear this controversy right now so it doesn't even have to be an issue of the future. All right? The captain of the Quebec City Ace Nordiques is Jonathan Huberdeau. And that's not changing. I agree. Yuri Kapitanov, the lethal Latvian, definitely made a name for himself. And he's getting that A. He's getting that alternate captain. Along with Aaron Ekblad. All right? These guys are your future. All right? You're your three, uh, four and a half gold star potential players, the center, the winger, the defenseman, who are all playoff performers. But I was reading one comment that was sent to me, and uh, something that I didn't even think of. Jonathan Huberdeau, you know, he played in the QMJHL. I guess he was born and raised in Quebec. I don't know if he can speak French, like, uh, French or anything, but uh, he is the perfect guy to have as your captain for a Quebec-based NHL team. He, he really is. He's the true face of the team. All right, he kills off the penalties. He takes the face-offs, all right? You're Kapitanov, yeah, he may have had the most points there, but uh, Jonathan Huberto allowed him to get the most points with his solid face-off taking and his solid defensive play and just his playmaking ability in the center there. So we don't have to worry about any controversy going forward. Captain Jonathan Huberto, Akblad, and Kapitanov, the two alternates, okay? And uh, if you guys could remind me about that before we do the season simulation in the next video or whenever, I'll just uh, recheck it because I think they do still get automatically changed. So now that that's taken care of, we can take a look at uh, the retirements here. Let's see if we lost anybody. See if there's any big names out there. Uh, no. Do, 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 do. Uh, Kovalev. No, I was going to say, that's not Alexei Kovalev, right? <laughs> I don't know what I was thinking there. Yeah, he's way gone. Uh, all right. Philadelphia, Phoenix, Pittsburgh, QC. Oh, they're QC. Oh, Brandon Prust. Brandon Prust is gone. All right, so he had a good playoff run for us. I actually think he had a key playoff goal somewhere in there. Uh, how old would he be four years from now? 32, 33, 34? I can't remember his name. And I wish you could click on the player profile, you know, and take a look at him as he's retiring. I can't. So, Brandon Prust, thank you very much. At least you're going out on a good note. He spent a few years with Montreal, then he got traded to Quebec City. All right. A couple first-round exits and then a Stanley Cup win. And then he calls it a calls it a year or calls it a career. So, thank you, Brandon Prust. All right. Uh, go down here. Damn, San Jose lost a lot of people. Franzen, Marlowe, Stewart, Havlak, Cleary, Fedotenko, <laughs> Jansen, Jesus. Uh, go down here. All right. So that's all taken care of. Goaltenders. Uh, Martin Broder finally retires on the New Jersey Devils, all right, with 1,387 games played. Should have played one more season, could have got 1,400. Jesus, 754 wins, 463 losses. Big chunk of those probably came in the four years that he didn't retire <laughs> in this franchise. 136 shutouts. Well, good, uh, good career there, uh, Martin Broder. All right, so there you go. All right. So, now we're up here at the uh, the draft deadline. Now, first things first, I want to check out what our uh, 
what our potential is like, what our players' potential is like. Because right now, as soon as the Stanley Cup Finals change and you get that retirement, right now you can check if players have dropped to the Red Star potential or not, right? Or if they've gone up, they can go up as well. So let's just check this out. So we got Eddie Lack and Markstrom, who are now both the White Star potential. All right, we have Markstrom signed 1.7 for like another six years or something like that, right? So it might be a smart idea to get Lack. If we can sign Lack for... Uh, less than five million, something like that, then it would be worth it to have them both for the future because a team like Nashville pays Pecorene what we would pay both Lack and Markstrom combined or price, right? So if we can get Lack for less than five million, I think I want to hold on to both of them. If Lack wants like six and a half or something like that, then we have to choose one, okay? But uh, yeah, they're both going to stay put at 85 and 84 overall, all right? Defensively, let's see this. Uh... Ah, uh, oh, god damn it, Ekblad! Ah, oh, this damn game and his damn red potential. Ekblad, one year in, one NHL season in, 86 overall, 21 years old. All right, he just got the overtime winner, and he's dropped to the red star potential. I hate the red star potential so much. All right, I mean, why, why, why would he drop? He's played one year in the NHL. He got 82 games played. All right, 35 points. Uh, he was a plus 11, all right? I mean, he got the overtime winner in the uh, in the Stanley Cup uh, finals, finals, to win the Stanley Cup, all right? He had eight points in the playoffs and a plus nine. Why is he dropped to red star potential? Ah, now, okay, you know what? I'll, um... I'll uh, go over this in a second. I can give you guys a perfect example, actually, when we get to the draft. I'll bring that back up when we get to the draft, all right? At least uh, Kapitanov stayed at the Yellow Star. That's good. Myers is capped off at 86. He, that's what I think Ekblad is going to be the next Myers. He stays at 86 because of the Red Star potential. So another top four two-way defenseman. God damn it, man. Kolakoff, he's at the Yellow Star. Morgan Riley, he stayed at the Red Star. We knew that. Good Branson, Yellow Star, all right? All these guys, yep. Let's go to forwards now. I just want to check potential. Uh, okay, well, that's at least good. Henriksen, Mantha, and Huberdo all stayed at the Gold Star potential. Okay? So that's that's good news right there. Um, at least Huberdo is still getting better. Barkov, he's he's staying. Career AHL for Barkov. Uh, McNeil, all right. Shore stayed at the uh, Green Star. He's already, what, how, 26 years old? Um... If, uh, if he doesn't turn 27 by, like, October, he'll get another jump. So that might be good for us, all right? And then that's it. So Ekblad, that's the only one that I'm really angry about. All right, everybody else has pretty much hit their peak, but Ekblad, god damn it, man. So I'll show you guys why that's a piece of crap. Hang on. You know what? Hang on, let's do a uh, playoff wrap-up. I haven't done that yet, have I? So we'll do the stats. We'll do all that stuff. Don't worry. Playoff stats of the playoffs. We can't check out Brendan Pruss. I should have done it right after to check out Brendan Pruss, uh playoff stats before he retired because now he won't be here so forwards all right Jonathan Huberto point of game player 20 points in 21 games uh that's why he's the captain all right maybe not the goal scorer like uh Kapitanov but uh he's the man there in the center of the ice only two penalty minutes and he kills all the penalties as well all right so Captain Huberto uh Eberle 18 points all right so that's good Peter Mueller 15 points all right McCallick 11 points so that second line was good for us and Shore 9 points so yeah that second line was great in the playoffs uh Matthias he was outstanding in the playoffs all right third line center of the future Bickle 8 points in the playoffs B uh Clifford 7 points Peverly 5 Hartigan and 4 four goals as well Okay, so there's our forwards. Uh, defenseman, Kapitanov. There it is, 23 points in 21 games, okay? Myers, 14 points in 21 games. Morgan Riley, 9 points. Ekblad, 8. Good Branson, 5. Kulikov, Martinez, Green, okay? So, yeah, Kapitanov, what a beast this guy is. And then goaltender. So, Markstrom kind of caught up to Eddie Lack there. And as he started to catch up in games played, their goals against average started to get a little bit closer, okay? So, don't throw Eddie Lack under the bus just yet. I mean, he had two bad games against Washington. That's why his uh, stats, you know, went up there. But uh, still very close. I mean, Eddie Lack, 9-3. Markstrom, 7-2. So, I mean, they're both very similar goaltenders. I mean, Eddie Lack technically had the better save percentage, right? So... That's what I mean. I, I think I want to get both of them in the future. So I can just, if, if one starts to falter, you go to the other one, right? It's it's that perfect one-two punch. So there's the uh, stats of the playoffs. Now, we're not going to have a big draft this year. I'm not going to be moving up in the draft. I, I think we do have a first overall pick, but it's going to be like, uh, or a first round pick, but it's going to be like 30th overall because we won the Stanley Cup this year. 
So, I mean, that's nothing uh, spectacular, but let's just see what's available. You got Yerky, Nitamaki, offensive defenseman, defenseman, but uh, no, I'm not going to be going for that. Jay Earl from North Korea, playmaker. Uh, Luke Elliott, two-way forward. Uh, Noah Cogliano, left-wing sniper. He looks like a, a good player there. Uh, Fought, defensive defenseman. Uh, 17 years old, 6'6". Good God, man. Um... Yeah, you know what? This is just going to be a quiet draft, boys. We don't. I don't even need to look at the prospect pool. I don't need to do any of that. Okay. I no, we're good. We're good. And I don't want to trade away any of our players as well. We won the Stanley Cup this year. I want to sign everybody. Okay. So I'm not going to be moving up. We got the 30th overall pick right there. That's fine. But what I want to show you about the Red Star potential that pisses me off. All right. It's not that like the players cap off and they don't get any better because that's you know that's somewhat realistic, right? Like it's your um what's it called um. Like, it keeps every GM mode a little bit different. What I have a problem with is that Aaron Ekblad has played one year in the NHL. He's 86 overall. He's 21 years old. He's got two years left. Three years, but it's it's going to turn to two years. He's got two years left on his minor league deal, okay? He just won, he just got the overtime winner to win the Stanley Cup. He played the whole year on the first line of a President's Trophy winning team. And all of a sudden, because the Red Star potential says, all right, it's Red Star now, all of a sudden, his trade value is that low, Okay? That's the problem that I have with it. It's the trade value that gets abrupted. I mean, I mean, right now, Good Branson is worth more than Aaron Ekblad. What the hell are you smoking? That doesn't make any sense whatsoever. If I take Aaron Ekblad, right, I go to a team. Let me just find a team that doesn't want him. Every team wants him. Never mind, right? Every team wants a guy like this. If I go to, say, a team like uh, Tampa Bay, right? Uh, let me just try to find a, a player here. Just give you guys an example, right? Teddy Purcell. No, no, no. Philpula. Here it is. Here's perfect one, right? Philpula. 34, 33 years old, 84 overall, uh, two years left at 5 million a year, right? I'll throw him in there. So Ekblad, the new young defenseman for an aging 34 year old Philpula. Will it go through? No, not even close. We could live with what you were sending us, but not in this deal. Your offer, your offer is woefully insufficient when I consider value for what you were asking in return. That's what the problem is with this game, alright? It's not that the players don't get better. I mean, 86 overall for Ekblad is still good, right? I wanted him to become a top two. To, yeah, hang on a second here. Uh, ooh, it's an enforcer right there. Scott Jackman. I'll grab him there. There you go. But, um, like, 86 overall, I'm not going to uh, draft anybody else. I don't need it. 86 overall is still decent, right? But, like, it's just such a buzzkill when you're 86 overall top four defenseman, which is still a very sought-after position in the NHL, is absolutely worthless because of his potential rating, right? I guess I gotta wait for him to turn 27 for his trade value to go back up. Like, more, like, uh, Tyler Myers, right? My God, and that's like the only reason I got uh, Morgan Riley as well. It's not, I don't have a problem with the players not getting better anymore. I have a problem with, oh, all of a sudden, you know, he's, he's, his potential's not good. Oh, I don't want to trade for a player like that. When an 87 overall defenseman already is good enough. You know what I mean? It already should be half the trade value. So, I mean, that's, that's the problem. EA, if you're listening, that's the problem with your Red Star potential. Patch, please. All right, so we got to get these uh, guys re-signed, all right? So, I don't want to, let me just trim down my team first. Let me trim down all the players that I know I don't want. Let me sign all the players that I won't matter, basically, or the players that I do want. Like Morgan Riley, I definitely want this guy. Now, hang on a second. Before I do any of this, let us just see what the year length is. One, two, two years. Huberto's got three, four. F okay, so Huberto's got four years. That's about perfect. Is anybody else going any longer? Four years for sure. All right, so four years seems to be the uh, the contract length. I know Markstrom's got more than that, but his doesn't count because his is only like 1.7. How much longer for Markstrom? One, two, three, four, five, six. We got Markstrom for another six years, okay? So, I mean, four or six years could be our length. So, Morgan Riley, let's sign this guy. There you go. Uh, okay, perfect, four years. Six years at 4.5. No, no, no. Let's keep him at four years because the red star potential, he'll be 27. We can really tell what he'll be at after uh, after that. So I can go down to 3.5. Yeah, 3.5 for four years for Morgan Riley. That works for me. Uh, Green, I'll hold off on. Martinez, I'll hold off on. Krug. Oh, I might be able to get Krug for a two-way deal. He's 78 overall as well. That's perfect depth. Uh, ooh, I might be able to get Tory Krug. Three years at two-way at .950. That would be a perfect uh, depth defenseman for the playoffs. Pouliot, this is the guy I picked up in the uh, Kapitanov trade. 
this exact same thing, right? His potential. This guy's a little bit more understandable why his trade value is so low. I mean, his uh, overall was still only 60-something overall, so you don't know if he's going to become something good. But that's my argument that I'm making with Ekblad. He's already had an amazing year, right? Like, he, he he's 86 overall. I don't know why his trade value is so low. Uh, Mad Finn. Uh, I'll give you two years. Looks like he might get a nice jump after that. So I'll give you the two years right there. Okay. Uh, go down here. Yep. Uh, Herbass. Uh, yeah, I'll sign him. Whatever. He's 24 years old, but I could use some of that depth. All right. There you go. That's fine. Uh, next up. All right. This guy, Murphy. Release you. Did Murphy have Nathan McKinnon's face? I swear, go go. Somebody go back in that and look. I I think I just saw Nate McKinnon's face on Murphy. I could be wrong, right? It's a new face to me, but I swear to God, when I was on Murphy right there, I thought it looked like Nate McKinnon. <laughs> uh, bowl you release you. Also remember about the uh, the glitch still. See how it has Aaron Ekblad on Arsenal. Just remember about that. I played enough though that I'm ready for it. Uh, all right, and Oliver LeBlanc. No, release you. Don't need you. Okay, so there's all the defensemen taken care of. I'll come back and sign the guys after once I can uh, see our cap space. But we should have enough cap space. $36 million here. Uh, Biggs, sign this guy as well. Uh, ooh, he wants 1.2. Oh, I can get him for a two-way deal. There you go. That's fine. Yep. That works for me. Okay, left wingers. Uh, Michalik I want to sign, but I'm going to hold off on. Hart to Kanan I want to sign. I don't want to hold off on Hart to Kanan. Our depth was one of our best things in the playoffs. I want to sign him for four years. And we lost Prust as well, so our depth is uh, very important. Okay, I want to sign him. Uh, Bickle, all right. So now we can re-sign Brian Bickle for a contract that is a little bit more, uh, I agree, is a little bit more of what he should be getting. But as a fourth liner, boys, Bickle is still a good player. All right, Third liner or second liner, he's gotten 20 points, but now he's a minus 15. Yeah, don't get me wrong, but I think that's because there was no offense on the fourth line. But then when I need him in the playoffs, he's a plus nine, eight points, all right? So I'm re-signing Brian Bickle. He's a, he's, a, he's a playoff performer. So Brian Bickle, I'll get you back on the team. One year, I'm not going to give him anything more than one year, all right? And uh, 1.4. Yeah, that's, that's a good deal for Brian Bickle. Now, Anthony Mantha. So the good news about Mantha, he's still got the uh, yellow star potential. 70 overall. So he might get the jump this year. He might get the jump. If I check out how many years, well, it's saying in eight years he's going to jump up only that much. So I don't want to give him that because then I have a contract. Like, it's not automatic that he's going to jump, right? I don't want to give him that. No, I think I'm going to give him the two-way deal still, boys. Two-way deal just to be safe, because he could get that red star potential. All of a sudden, he's got the plague as well. I can't trade him away, and I got cap in him. No, I don't want that, all right? the reds, You know what? That's the new name for the uh, red star potential players, the plague, all right? They got the plague. No team wants them. Uh, Sean Mathias, absolutely. This guy is the new uh, new playoff performer of the future. 29 years old. Sign him to a four-year four deal. Yeah, I'll sign him four years. This guy's worth it. This guy was worth every penny. Um, three, four... I think I go, well, that might be a little, yeah, there you go, 2.7 for four years, all right, for uh, Matthias, Brodziak, maybe, if I have money, uh, Peverly, yes, Peverly was a good fourth line center for us, one year, same as Bickle, let me just check out his individual stats, <sighs> defense awareness has dropped a little, but it's it's serviceable, yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll do it, don't know who's available in free agency, and uh, I got the cap space, I don't want to be shoveling out, well, excuse me, shoveling out an arm and a leg for free agents when I can just sign them right now. Uh, all right, so Barkoff, I jack up his price at <laughs> 1.3 in eight years. Yeah, this guy, he's not becoming anything. Sorry, Fantastic Fins. All right, blame EA Sports. Don't blame me. Uh, so I'll give him a three-year deal at uh, 6.75. There you go. Worst second overall pick in the history of, uh, well, actually, probably not. Alexander Dake. That did happen once. Um, all right, so that should be everybody. Let me just advance the day and just see how much cap space we have available right after. Okay, so an easy decision, blah, blah, blah. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah, we should be able to get everybody on the team. All right, that's good news. Okay, so we still have $28 million to work with here. Let me just see who, yeah, we only have uh, four players to sign in our uh, $28 million. So you see what I mean? We have plenty of cap space to sign all of these guys. So first, we'll sign Eddie Lack. We'll try to get him back on our team. What does he want? He wants 5.2. What did I say? Less than four I can uh, take him on for, okay? So what's the, uh, yeah, okay, three years is the least. So that works because I can I can negotiate less than uh, less than five. So let's just see here. What can he, uh, what can he take? 
Uh, he might be able to get, I might be able to get 4.5 for three years. I might be able to. If not, I'll have to 4.65 or something. Uh, green, he, I think I want Green back. Green was a pretty good defenseman for us, right? Green played this year, right? Like, he played in the NHL. Yeah, he did. Yeah, Green's coming back. Sign, uh, re-sign Matt Green. One-year deal. No, 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 no. One-year deal. Because you guys, these are the guys who might, you know, might be traded or might uh, not play on our team again for the next, like, for the next four years anyways. Uh, McCallick, same thing. I don't want to give him four years, right? But uh, two years more for McCallick. Yeah, two years. That works for me, McCallick. I'll give you two years of four mil. All right. Uh... Yeah, yeah, two years of four mil. That works for me. All right. Uh, Brodziak, do I want another uh, center back? You know what? He would have been better than Peverly to sign. Yeah, I'll just give him a deal. I got plenty of cap space. Yeah, one year, but uh, he's actually got some pretty good defensive stats. 2.250. Oh, and uh, Martinez, I'll sign this guy for some depth defenseman as well. Yeah, that works. Okay, so advance. You know what? I think I might want to put out uh, two GM modes today. Just to, uh, because, you know what, free agency, we're at 20 minute mark. I don't want to make this like a 30 minute video because I've been doing that a lot lately and the uploads take for freaking ever. So what I can do is come up with like 220, 220s, do the free agency in the next video and maybe get one month of uh, season simulation done. So that's everybody signs. That's everybody signs. Yep. Yeah, okay, that's everybody signed. So I'm going to get two GM modes out today, all right, because I don't really need that much help in free agency. I know what team we want. We got $18 million of cap space. Um, all I got to do is fill up what we need, what we lost from Prust, and we're pretty much ready to go. Uh, unless there's like a superstar available, right? I'll, I'll say that. But uh, yeah, we'll end this video right here, and you guys will get two GM modes today, all right? So I will see you guys in the next video.